Hey everybody, how are you? It's Peter again for MLB Trade Rumors and Discussions. It's Thursday, March 26, 2020. Still trying to keep this going every single day like I promised you guys. Today I am up to the Miami Marlins, right? We have talked about every team so far alphabetically. The last two teams have been rough <laughs> with the Mariners yesterday and now the Marlins, but still got to talk about them. The Marlins are in a little better shape than the Mariners, right? They got a couple of good players. They made a really good move for me in the offseason by getting Jonathan Villar. Villar is a solid ball player. He's a good leadoff hitter. He always gets on base. He steals bases. He's just a solid player, and he can play all over the diamond. So that was a great move to me. They got a solid player in Brian Anderson. But what I liked about what Miami did, they brought in the fences, right? We haven't got a chance to see it yet. But they needed to do that. That ballpark was just too big. I haven't seen how it looks. But by bringing in the fences, it's definitely going to help them out a lot, especially their hitters. It, it, it was rough sometimes, you know. After they lost guys like Stanton and uh, Bohr and everything like that, it, it was just who's going to power it out. But I do like Brian Anderson. He is a solid player, which is good. They got a good shortstop. They have a decent second baseman. You know, we got Rojas on short and Diaz on second. They're okay. Nothing spectacular. Where they are pretty good to me is at pitching. Do not go by what you see with their record. That is mainly because they either couldn't score enough and then their ERA looks a little bit worse when the guys kind of get later into the game and then all of a sudden give up an extra couple of runs. That's why I don't like to look too much into analytics because you don't know how sometimes when those runs are giving up or to the point of was it a bloop hit or anything like that. For me, what it looked like was the Marlins have two or three pitchers that can honestly be really good, but they're in a division with a tough bunch of guys like the Mets, the Nationals, the Braves, and the Phillies. So all those teams can pitch one way or another or hit. So the Marlins are kind of just stuck in the back end of it. However, they got guys like Caleb Smith, who is really good. That is a left-handed pitcher who was solid. If you looked at him last year, he did very well. They got a guy in Alcantara who can pitch, and Lopez of Lopez. They got three pitchers who honestly are up and coming, and they will be good soon. They just need to work on building a little bit more on that offense. You know, that the, the offense is tough. What I like that they did was they went out and got a guy in uh, Aguilar from Milwaukee after he went to Tampa Bay, but that guy is going to play the whole year, right? A couple of years ago, he looked amazing. Last year, definitely the struggle really bad, but you can see he's due for a bounce back year, and I expect him to do very well in Miami. I expect him to probably hit 30-something home runs, and either they can keep him or they can flip him at the deadline and whatever it is going to be a deadline and trade that guy because he is talented. So I like that move. And they got a guy in Dickerson who is probably going to be the same exact situation. You get these guys, you get them to perform, let them do well, flip them, build your team. That's where that's where Miami is at this point, okay? Again, it's tough because, well, again, if you're looking at the Mets right now, the Mets coming into this year look really good. But now that Syndergaard is out, now DeGrom is the leader, okay? Which he's always been, but he's just main, mainly, it's no more one-two punch. It's him, now it's Stroman second. Stroman's a good pitcher, but it's not the same as him and Syndergaard. So now the Mets probably are going to go backwards. The Mets are probably going to take a step back. So Miami, you know, it, it's tough for these fans because not too long ago when I watched them have Jose Reyes and Stanton and all these guys opening the season and you're like, holy shit, and it just tanked, you know? They tanked. They kind of blew it. Jeter right now, I, people are criticizing Jeter, but what do you want the guy to do, right? What do you want him? He came into a bad situation, had to save money, had to blow up the team and just... Get, get rid of everybody and start from scratch. So it may take a couple more years, but I feel like Miami and G Jeter, they're, they're smart. They know what to do. You know, Jeter's too competitive to lose. They just got to start over and good luck to those guys because it's just a wonderful place to be in Miami. You know, it's glad that they haven't done before, before when it was raining all the time sucked. But, you know, it's just, it's a wonderful play. It's a beautiful ballpark. And the fans would be great when if the baseball is doing well. So, Good luck to them, but, you know, it's tough. It's tough to be a fan, and I've been there before where your team just doesn't have a damn shot for a few years. You know, it's it's extremely tough. And then I remember one of the fans telling Derek Jeter, I'm getting older, and, you know, by the time the team is getting good, I'm going to be dead by then. So what do you want Jeter to do? Just to put on a, a 
spend a bunch of money to just have a decent team on the field and sacrifice the future just to, so you can win a few more games. You, you sometimes got to do this. Sometimes you got to tear up the team. Now, that's why I like Hazen because Hazen kind of didn't tear up the team. He slowly developed and by tearing up the team and getting better at the same time. So Jeter should learn how to do that too because, again, it's not fair to some of the fans. And it goes to show you, there is no fans right now, right? You can't even watch the game. So without fans like wrestling and everything like that, there is no sport. There is no baseball. There is no basketball. There's nothing. LeBron said as much as I hate the guy. LeBron said it. You know, he plays for the fans. You know, there's nothing worse than to hit a big three and then nobody's clapping. <laughs> you know, and yeah, it's, just, it's not the same. The fans make the excitement. It brings the energy in, whether it's hate, love, no matter what. You know, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.